Greetings. We've got golf squares in Google Sheets today for your PGA Tour betting joy. I saw somebody do this for football squares. Let me pull it up here on the screen for you. I thought I would do it for the PGA Tour. Got some Masters green here for the background, of course. On the top row, we've got the from par row. So this is like zero is par, of course, and then minus one through minus nine, or in the case of a leader being plus par, uh, it would work in the same way. Also, if you're in the double digits, just of note, we're looking only at the ones place. So if you're minus 18 is the winning score, you're still gonna be in this K column for the eight from par. Over here on the X axes, Y axes, we've got the birdie or better count. So this is how many birdies or eagles or albatrosses you have received in the round per player, um, zero through nine. Again, looking at the ones place only. So here's how it would work at the end of round one. If you are the leader of the tournament and your score is minus two and you've had four birdies through that round, then you would be score from par minus two and then down here, four birdies. And so the winner of that would be Mikey. All right, that's how the scoring works. Just a little refresher, I've got the links to the PGA scoreboards up here for your convenience and for the stats for the from uh, for the birdies or better right there. Uh, right here in the middle, we've got a cost per square. So this is, hey, how much do we wanna charge per square per person? for these squares. We can do a dollar, okay? So you get 10 squares for 10 bucks. We can do 15 bucks, 10 squares for 150. Whatever you wanna do there, it will populate the buy-in amount down here based on what you select up there. So I've got 10, up to 10 slots here. You can have more or less, but I've got it configured for 10. Uh, for each player that enters their stuff over here, Say Leo, he's got a counter right here and it's showing, hey, you've got 11, Leo, and Donatello's only got nine. So if you're allowing uh, disparate amounts, that's cool. If everybody's supposed to have 10, you can be like, hey, that's not cool. And then just uh, put Donnie back on the board for 10. Anyhow, there's a drop down list. If you double click any of the squares in the grid, it will show all the options over there for the players that you have entered right here. And I'll prove it if I change Leo to Eamon. You'll see that there's now errors over here because this is no longer valid. And now we've got the leaderboard. So the total prize pool, this is just going to calculate based on whatever you've got entered here and the buy-in down there. If we up it to 20 bucks a pop, now we're up at two grand for the prize pool. You can do these uh, leaderboards different ways. The way I've got this one set up though, I, I like to have a winner after each round. So I just took half of the total pool and then I split that up into the four rounds. So I got 250 per round for a total of a thousand there. And then the final score winner uh, is the thousand dollar pot. So that's really how it functions. Uh, right here, you'll need to input the scores. So you need to input the par and then the birdie or better. The winner uh, will calculate automatically whoever's in that grid. Um, so in this case, it's slash. If, if we change that, it will update automatically to whoever uh, the winner should be. Over here on the setup sheet, um, you can change these, although there's not really a good reason, I don't think, to. If you wanted to randomize these from par numbers and birdies numbers so that they're not in order, you're certainly welcome to do that here. The grids, and I'll show you what I mean. If I changed one and zero's place over here, the grids will change. See how one and zero are now in a different order. These will change and update just based on how you have this set up. Okay, so I've got that in order. And then the cost per square option. So, you know, maybe you wanna go crazy. Maybe you want $100 per pop buy-in. Well, you can do that. And then there it is in this cost per square dropdown. And you've now got a $10,000 total prize pool. And uh, lucky April O'Neil just won $5,000. Uh, incidentally, the reason I've got these round winners is so that you can win back your money plus a little bit. So your buy-in is a, is a thousand here and a payout for each of these round winners is 1250. So you get, get a little bit back. Uh, further stuff over on the setup, we've got 2023 tournaments, just kind of a running list that I've got here. Over on ESPN, they have a leaderboard 
for each of the tournaments, and it's an easy place to pull into the sheet the tournament uh, leaderboard if you want to. The PGA Tour didn't have quite as usable uh, of a sheet for pulling it into Google Sheets. And here's what I mean by that. So I'm just using import HTML over here. Here's the Byron Nelson Classic. Here's the PGA Championship. Here is the Charles Schwab. And then the latest leaderboard is probably not even a leaderboard because it's going to be, yeah, tee times for an upcoming tournament. So this is just an added bonus. Uh, this is not populating the sheet. Uh, it was not possible to pull out the birdies or better part of it, so we couldn't get a winner just automatically from these sheets. I hope this has been helpful for you. I had a lot of fun making this, and I'll probably do a football squares one as well, just because this is a great little spreadsheet specific type of thing. If you want to get this spreadsheet, I've got the link in the description of the video. It's over on my Gumroad page, which allows you to support the work I'm doing by buying it for 10 bucks. Or if you really can't afford 10 bucks, it's all yours for free. Just hit zero, and then I think it'll ask you for your email, and it'll email you the link to it. At any rate, I appreciate you watching this video. Please subscribe to the channel, like this video, all the usual stuff, making more content like this on the regular. You're awesome. Have a great one.